Okay, so welcome to tonight's webinar. As you can see from the screen in front of you there, uh, tonight's webinar is called Team Building for Beginners. And this is uh, the fourth in a series of eight webinars that I run. The first three that we've done, I normally do uh, one a week, uh, as often as I can, not every single week because sometimes it clashes with meetings or things, but probably takes about nine or maybe ten weeks to do the full cycle. But uh, the first three are um, on the, the retail side, so all about getting started with your catalogs and what to do in your first few weeks. Um, this one and next week are to do with getting started with team building and supporting your team mem uh, new team members. And then the last three are all about the kind of personal development side of the business. So they're all very important. People come, uh, come to them at different parts in their kind of clean, easy journey. Um, and... Uh, all eight of these are recorded, so at the end I'll show you where they all are, so if there's a particular one you'd like to look at which is useful for you at the moment in your clean easy business, then you can go and have a look at that one um, as and when the time's right for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So, team building. Uh, this is what we're going to cover today. First, a quick question about whether you have to build a team. Not everybody does, but uh, a lot of people do team build. Um, but if you decide not to, you might want to consider why you should build a team, what are the, the pros and cons. Um, and then if you are team building, what tools do you need, how to get started. I'm going to talk a bit about different rods in the pond, if, if you're not sure what that means, all, all will become clear in, in 10 minutes or so. Um, and then when you do start to get a lead, somebody who's interested in earning a bit of extra money, what do you do then? It's all very exciting getting your advertising and starting to talk to people, but what if somebody does want some information? And then what information you can send to people who are interested, and then how to follow up, basically. So that's the, the, the part of it that we're going to be covering uh, tonight. So a quick question. Do you have to build a team? If you're a clean, easy distributor and you're enjoying doing your catalogues, is it okay to carry on doing that? Or do you think it's important to build a team? What, what does everybody think? Does anybody want to put a, put their words down on the, in the chat box there? Or people could say if they are team building yet, or if they're planning to. Yep, Sue says no, you don't have to, that's true. Dave says no, you don't, that's true. Yeah, you're both right, guys. Yeah, you don't have to. Um, Sue, uh, who is my sponsor, always tells me about 80% of distributors don't team build, they're, they're quite happy doing their catalogues, servicing their customers and so on. So so the answer is no, you don't have to build a team. And uh, as I've just said there, most distributors don't. But it's important to know that you can if you want to. And I always um, explain to any new team members that, that I have, um, oh hi Peter, you're very welcome, that's no problem. Um, any new team members that I have, um, that you can team build if you want to. And a lot of distributors become team builders by accident. Um, just this can be something as simple as one of your customers might say, "Actually, you know, my husband's just lost their job. You know, is it? Are you looking for any new distributors in the area?" Or um, you know, you you might see somebody, a friend, who and you just mentioned that you you started uh, earning a bit of extra money. They say they could do with a bit of extra money. Is there any chance they could do what you're doing? So even without kind of actively trying to team build, you can almost become a, an accidental team leader. Um, so it's important to know that you can and, and how to do it if you do it, if you do do that way. So although you don't have to, there are many advantages in being a team leader and building a team. So the first one, the most obvious one, is the much bigger income. I mean, although we're, we've seen stories from people like um, Paul Tonkin and uh, Sohail, Sohail Ahmed who are, who are earning really big money doing their own catalogues. They, they, even though they are earning lots of money, they're still quite small compared to what you can earn if you look at the earnings of, <coughs> excuse me, um, sort of people who are have been in the business for a while and have built a team. They, they can earn a lot more. So if you're looking for the, a, a bigger income, then team building is a, is a good way to do that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, but I think personally by far the most important bit is the fact that because we're all self-employed, if you're delivering your own catalogues, if you're ever ill or you're on holiday, then there's nobody going to go and put your catalogues out for you. And so you don't get paid from your own personal retail from that side. However, if, you're, if you've got a team that 
that are working with you and your team members are obviously still putting their catalogues out to earn their income then you still get paid all of your bonuses based on your team's orders so it's just it's a much more stable income and it's uh, less dependent on your own personal efforts that's kind of why we talk about it as being a residual income so if you do decide you want to get into the team building what sort of tools do you need well mostly it's, it's fairly straightforward and um, you need um, I would say to be uh, using the easy reach telephone um, training system this is just a great way to, to allow prospects to leave, call you up and leave you a message so they're not calling your phone in the middle of the night or calling you up where you're not quite sure what to say to them so they can just call this number excuse me and leave a message for you and also Gavin sends down every day lots of great stories about um, you know, new team members what they've done how they started and these stories you will find come in very handy when you're starting to speak to prospects and prospects will be saying things like oh well you know, I'm a single mom I'm not sure that I'm going to have the time to do it you know I've, I've probably only got two or three hours a day or something like that and um, and you can explain to them about stories that you've heard even if you don't have personal experience so um, all those messages that come down easy reads are really really useful for, for helping you with that and um, the other thing that you need is some kind of diary because you need to be able to schedule and plan your time and your diary can be a, you know, a paper diary or on a computer and you also need some kind of lead book and the lead book is just simply a way to keep track of all of the people that you've spoken to so a lead is like somebody who you've either spoken to or you've received details from them um, and they're interested in finding out more about earning some extra money so we call them a lead or a prospect I guess it's two different words you could use for the same thing there. so some way of keeping track of them <coughs> names, telephone numbers and so on. Um, it's pretty important to have a telephone. You do need to be able to talk to your prospects and your team members and you need some information to send them. Quite often when they contact you initially they don't know that much about Clean Easy. They're, they're contacting you because they want some information. So clearly it makes sense if you've got some to send to them. And I'll, I'll cover a bit more about that in a moment. Excuse me a moment. So, if you've decided you would like to get started as a team leader, start then building our team, a great way to do it is just to start off on your warm list. These are people that you know, 10 people <coughs> <coughs> that you're good friends with. You, know, you might go out for a drink with them, you know, they socialise with them. They're, you know, good friends, you can trust them, they, they'll listen to you and, and you can ask them to have a look at some information and give them your opinion. And they're not just going to sort of say, oh, well, no, I don't think this is going to work. They'll, they'll you know, give you an honest opinion about it. So um, what I suggest is that you call them up using what we call a third-party approach. And by this, all that you say is something along the lines of, oh, hi, Graham, it's Chris, how are you? Um, Graham, I wondered if you can do me a favour. I just started um, doing this uh, little work-from-home business. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Clean Easy. I wondered if you could do me a favour. If I send you some information, would you have a little look at it? And if you can think of anybody that might be interested, would you let me know? So by saying that, you're not saying to them, Hi Graham, you're always skinned, come on, you could do with some extra money, come and join us. What you're saying is, would they have a look to see if they know anybody? So most of your friends would say, oh yeah, there's no problem, I'll have a look. They may not know anybody, but the point is, you're just asking them to have a look at it, and you're starting to sow some seeds in their minds, because they now know that you have a way to earn a bit of extra money and you don't know their situation, they may not tell you everything um, and so they might be in a situation where they could do with a bit of extra money maybe not now, but who knows, in three, six months, a year or two so every day you can add more people to that list you start off with ten people that you know and add a couple more every day and it will soon build up and always, always, always follow up so once you've sent the information to them then ring them up a couple of days later oh hi Graham, it's Chris, did you get a chance to have a look at that information? what did you think? You know, did anybody come to mind? You know, and again, all you're doing there is just ask, you're just refreshing their memory about you know making sure they've had a chance to have a look at it. They might say, "Oh, actually, yeah, that was really interesting. I'd never realised Clean Easy was like that." Um, could we get together and, and tell me a bit more about it? Because we might be interested in that. Or you know, oh, my brother-in-law's just been made redundant. Actually, can I? Is it okay if I forward this on to him? 
So just little things like that. It's very kind of friendly, easy to do, um, and you never know. You might find one or two team members before you've even got started. And as I said there, the important thing here is you're sowing your seeds. You're, you're letting them know you have a way to earn some extra money so that as and when their circumstances change, and people do, you know, our life is not all a smooth journey, as and when their circumstances change, especially if you're working really hard on this and you show them the extra 500 or or £1,000 a month you're earning part-time around your other commitments, they'll be thinking, you know what, I could do with a bit of that. So, that's the way to get started. We, talk, we call that your warm list, people that you already know. And I'm just going to expand on that a little bit. Um, and we call this, this next section is called the fish pond activity. Um, and we talk about having a number of different rods in the pond. So I'll just quickly ask you a question for any of you who go fishing or angling. I'm not sure what the official term is. I'm not an angler myself. Um, but if you've ever seen any serious anglers at the end of a pier or on the beach or, or by the, the, the lake or something, have you ever noticed how many fishing rods they use? Any any thoughts? What do, what do people think? Have you ever... Is anybody a keen fisherman themselves? Yeah, three. I think that's not uncommon. Yeah, every day you see... Yeah, I suppose down in Little Hampton on the coast there. Yeah, and you see lots. Yeah, that's it. The point is, they don't go there with their stick and a little worm on the end of a bit of string. They will have several different rods. The more the merrier, effectively. Because... Whoops, sorry. Because what, you, what they're looking at is that different kinds of fish will eat or will take the bait in different ways. So you have, might have different bait for different kinds of fish, some near the bottom of the water, some near the surface, some in the shade, some in the sun. So you will have different kinds of uh, different rods in different places depending on what different kinds of fish you're looking for. And it's exactly the same. We think of um, prospects and leads out there as just being lots and lots of people out there who may be looking for a way to improve the quality of their life. They're, if you like, our fish, and the, the, the world, or at least our, the clean, easy world, so uh, United Kingdom and, and Ireland, all of the people in there who are over 18 are the fish that we are kind of uh, trying, to, trying to catch, as it were. So, good thing to get started, just before you start doing lots of advertising and things, is, is setting up a website. Now, we all get... A clean easy website anyway, so the um, you know the, the, the website with the mycleaneasy.com slash and your uh, account number at the end, which has the Angela Griffin video, is a great thing to start because it's up. <coughs> excuse me, it's already been set up, but you can create your own domain name, and uh, domain name is just if you like the name of the website, so www.chrisfromringwood.com could be mine or you know, anything that's free. You know, there's lots and lots of ones out there. Earnextramoney.com um, you know, financialfreedom.co.uk, all those sorts of things. Um, so you need to choose one that's not already been taken. Um, you can also use tools such as contact managers and autoresponders. I'll expand on that a little bit. There's a, a couple of different ones out there. <coughs> I mentioned big advertising there just because that's the one I used originally. I use a different one now, but it's, it's quite a simple one to use, and I know that's a, a, a one that lots of people use. So um, have a little look at big advertising if you want to make a start. So once you've got a website and a domain name, you can start thinking about putting adverts in shop windows and doing leaflets. Here are a few of the different ways that you can um, look for people that might be wanting to earn a bit of extra money. And all of these different ways work. Uh, and uh, there's different pros and cons to them. I'll just bring up a list and I'll, I'll go through a, little, a few of them with you. Obviously, you can place adverts in newspapers. Wearing a badge is a great thing to, you know, just people will look at the badge. But your badge says something like, um, if you hate your job, ask me about mine. Or, um, earn extra cash now, ask me how. Or, you know, lots of little badges like that. Just that people will, it will attract somebody's attention while you're stood in the queue for a copy or in post office queue. And you'll see people that are looking at your badge. So, lots of great things like that. Um, signs on your car, they're, they're a great way of doing it as well. Business cards that you can hand out to people that you know or you can just leave um, in um, kind of, you know, just by cash machines and you can kind of leave leave a trail of cards wherever wherever you want. Posters that you can put on um, telegraph poles, um, a variety of different things. I'm not going to go through all of these in detail. Um, the point I'm, I'd like to make though is that typically 
none of these are free. They all cost either money or time. So, for example, you can put a newspaper advert in. Probably takes you. <coughs> oh, excuse me again. Probably takes about five minutes a phone call. Um, you know, you can make a very simple advert. You know, earn extra money in your spare time for a free information pack. Visit blah blah blah. You know, quite short to the point. Um, and uh, it won't take you any time at all to do it, but it will cost you money. Obviously, the newspapers will charge you for the advertising, so that could be fifty or a hundred pounds. And hopefully, you will get a number of leads from that. You know, I used to find that uh, depending on the newspaper, you could, could get anything between fifty and a hundred leads for a reasonable advert. So, you know, if you're paying a hundred pounds for it and you get a hundred leads, that's a pound a lead, so that's not bad. Um, other things such as um, leaflets, which is a really good way of doing it as well, because you can target a particular area that you're interested in. Leaflets are fairly cheap to buy. You, know, you can buy them from the bids web shop, and and so they're not very really expensive, but it takes you time to put them out. So I, I said earlier that not many of these things are free. It either takes you time or money. But the beauty of all of these things, what I tend to suggest is find three or four that you really like. You know, some people. There's, there's one here about surveys where you you know ask people on the street if they'll answer a few questions. And some people are really nervous about doing that. Uh, and I can understand that. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, do something else. You know, put a, um, do some newspaper advertising. If you're, um, if you don't have the money to pay for paid advertising, then you can do things like the three foot rule or speaking to your customers. That's a great way of doing it. Or putting posters up uh, on telegraph poles. Um, wearing a badge, you know, for example. So there's a number that are free. So have a look at them all. Speak to your sponsor because your sponsor, if your sponsor is doing a, um, is a team leader, and obviously they are if they've sponsored you into the business, then they will have, they'll be able to help you on different rods that they use and what's working well for them, uh, and you can you can kind of do that uh, as well. But basically, the more rods you use, the more fish you will catch. And as I said, there, <coughs> excuse me, that's just a summary. If you if your sponsor is not all that keen on team building and you just want to, a bit more advice on any of these. Then let me know. I'm quite happy to, to talk to uh, them in more detail with you. Where, uh, but it probably take a bit too long to to do all of that in the webinar this evening. Okay, what's next then? What should we do when you get a lead? So you put some business cards out. You you've been doing some leafleting. You put a few shop cards out around shops, and you get a, an email come through all of a sudden saying. Graham Johnson has replied to your advert uh, da, 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 with a contact number and so on. So that's really exciting. It's a bit might be a bit scary as well. So what I would suggest you do is to try to call them within 24 hours. Now, just be aware you will make lots of mistakes because everybody does. If you try to wait and practice and practice and practice what you're going to say by standing in front of the mirror, then you know, you, you'll just, all you're doing is delaying the inevitable. You're much better off just calling them up. And the the first conversation, the first conversations that you'll have with people are just going to be very, very short anyway. You're not trying to describe the business to them. All you're saying is, <coughs> excuse me, um, all I say is something on the lines of, oh, hi, is that um, whoever, Graham? Uh, it's Chris here. You replied to our advert about working from home. And hopefully they'll sort of say, oh, yes, yeah, that's right. I saw a shop card in, in the, the co-op or whatever. And you say, oh, that, that's brilliant. Um, could you just tell me a little bit about your situation? Um, and then they might sort of say, oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working at the moment, but uh, there's lots of redundancies going on. So I just really wanted to look around and see, see what other opportunities might be out there. So and I normally at that point say, oh, yeah, OK, that's great. Well, would it be OK if I send you some information about what we do? And of course they say yes, because that's what they're after. So I then just sort of say, okay, so I can email it to you, if that's okay. And some people, if they don't have email, they prefer it in the post, but I, I normally prefer to email it to them. So you just get their email address, which you might already have anywhere from their initial response, and, and send them that information. But calling them quickly is really, really important, because if it is somebody who's looking for um, a way to earn some extra money, yours is probably not the only advert that they've seen. So if they've replied to half a dozen adverts and three or four days later you get round to calling them, they may well have spoken to three other people, decided one of them sounds interesting and have already signed up for something else before you even speak to them. So I really would say try to make sure you call them within 24 hours. And the best way to get your, your 
the, the talking, the script that you use right, is just to practice it. When I first started off, I kind of wrote down um, the script that I wanted to use based on what my, my sponsor Sue and Bob were doing. Um, I changed a few of the words so that it kind of you know, felt a bit more comfortable to me. And over the years, I've kind of changed it and adapted it and tried a few different things. And every time I make some changes, I make a few mistakes, but you know, it doesn't really matter. The person at the other end of the phone doesn't really know what you're supposed to be saying. They're just wanting to have a bit of a chat. And, and so, as I said, the purpose of the conversation is really just very brief. You're just building a little bit of rapport so that they know you're a genuine human being. You're not just some guy from Bulgaria who's um, you know, uh, trying to uh, create some kind of scam or something like that. They just sort of want to feel that you're a genuine person. Um, if they ask you any questions, then you can give them a quick summary of how Clean Easy works. But I always say, just um, send them. Just is it okay if I send them a bit more information? And the important thing is just to be excited about it. People join you; they don't join Clean Easy. I mean, that's that's just a way of saying it. You know, they, they obviously they do join Clean Easy. But if you just ring them up and sort of say, "Oh yeah, well, thanks for your uh, reply. Uh, I'm going to send you some stuff in the post. You probably won't be interested, but just have a look at it anyway." then that's just going to put them off from day one. But if you're really excited about it and say, oh yeah, I've got this really good information pack, should explain everything that you need to know, but if you do have any questions at all, feel free to reply to the email or give me a call back any time, then you know, they're going to sort of sense that kind of excitement in your voice and they'll be interested, they'll be curious as to what you want to send them. And then send them that information as soon as possible. And if they, as I said, they don't try to sell it to them over the phone, you know, because that's a they don't want to be sold to, and secondly, you know, th there's all the professional stuff, the Angela Griffin video and everything that's out there, and um, use that to explain the business to them. Don't try and sell it to them yourself. And um, if they do have any questions, I always kind of clarify any questions that they might have, but generally, I try to keep this first conversation, as I said, they're very brief and just a way of building a little bit of rapport with them. Okay. What kind of information might you send them? So, um, as I said, they don't try to sell it to them over the phone. The, the Opportunity brochure and the DVDs that you can get from Head Office are great for people that uh, want something in the post. For people that want something via email, there's loads of good stuff on YouTube. What I haven't put up here yet, which I will do, is all distributors now have the... Um, Angela Griffin opportunity information on www.mycleaneasy.com slash and it's your I'm going to add this to the slides for future and then your account number so whatever it is six seven eight blah 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 and um, and it, at each website um, with that information on there is customized so it has your name on so that you know that the uh, the prospect will kind of get familiar with with you and your name by looking at that. And that Angela Griffin video is a great introduction to how it all works. And there's loads of other stuff you can send them as well. So if you go onto YouTube and um, do a search for Clean Easy HQ, there's the Clean Easy HQ account, and there's all of the It Works videos. You know the ones with uh, Jackie and, and Peter White, with um, uh, Abby, the, the the student, and so on. And, and you can, having spoken to somebody, you know if they're young and they're a student, you could send them the Abby video. If they're kind of coming up for retirement, you could send them the, the Rosemary Roundtree and Steve Johnson video. So there's lots of different ones that will kind of meet, kind of match most people's situations. And that they're good ones to send to people as well. Um, I always prefer to send it via email because um, personally it just gets there straight away. If they're, they're keen... Oh, sorry, uh, Alf, can, can, I, can I just check with everybody else? Alf just says it's gone quiet. Can I just ask everybody else, can you all hear me okay? Maybe it's my microphone that's uh, gone down a bit. Yeah, Peter can hear. Yeah, thank you, Sue. Yeah, yeah, David can hear me. Okay, Alf, I'm not sure it might be something at your end. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, the point I was making there, I'll try and speak up a little bit, Alf. Hopefully that will be okay. Um, you can, if you can email it to them, firstly you get it to them really, really quickly. And secondly, if somebody says no, they're not interested, then no doesn't mean never, it just means not now. And their circumstances might change. And so if you have their email, then you can build a big list of emails of people who have said no, it's not right for me at the moment. And by using 
something like an autoresponder and there's a number of different ones big advertising and eye contact that are two that I've used but there are others as well then you can personalize emails and send emails to groups of people <coughs> in all sorts of clever ways these days so that way you can keep in touch with them and when their circumstances change and you know their hours get cut at work or anything like that because that you've been keeping in touch with them through emails and so on when the time's right for them <coughs> They'll come back to you. Okay, what other information could you send to prospects? If you've got somebody who's interested and they just want a bit more information, or they kind of they're they're, they're kind of considering it. That's often a good one. I'm thinking about it. I'm not really sure. Then, if you've got somebody who you think might be a good prospect for that for you, you can send them things like there's a a, a great leaflet from head office just about how to get started. There's the company Team Talk magazine. That's a really good glossy professional well produced magazine with great stories it's got all the facts and figures of how much people are earning how much uh, is going through the business and so on so send them a copy of that that's a, that's a great uh, tool to, to send people as well um, I'm also a big believer in sending them copies of checks if you've just started <coughs> you might not have a check for yourself yet but there are lots of examples of checks in um, in the testimonials on Gavin's website or um, uh, from head office and normally what I would do is send them two or three examples. So um, a small check from someone who just started, just showing in their first two or three months how they got themselves to £50 a week. So that's you know 200 and something a month uh, in, a, in a period. Um, somebody else who's maybe earning a 1000 or so a period. Because a £1,000 a month is, is you know a reasonable salary in a full-time job these days. So if somebody is looking for a way to replace a full-time salary and you send them a check um, for a thousand pounds, it shows them people earning a thousand pounds or more. Then that's great. And um, if you can uh, send them a large check, so this is somebody who's earning five thousand or more, they can see that there are some fantastic lifestyles lifestyles available. And whatever their situation is, whatever they're looking for, that gives them an idea of what they can achieve with Clean Easy. Um, and then there's also lots and lots of press articles just from newspapers and so on. That that third party credibility that shows people that Clean Easy have been around for a long time, 1923. So you know they don't have to worry about you know, it being a kind of fly by night uh, opportunity that might disappear. Okay, a good thing to do is to keep track of all of your prospects or your leads. So basically, as you get information coming through to you about somebody who's replied to an advert and, and they want a bit more information, uh, just write down um, all, all their details, basically. So their name, telephone number, address, whatever you've got. And then just keep track of their current situation. Maybe they're, they're working at the moment but looking for you know an extra couple of hours, two or three evenings a week and a Saturday morning or something. Um, and make a note of any kind of current information about them. So if, for example, you know, they're... they're they, they don't get back to you when they were going to because you know the little Johnny's in hospital or something then just make a, lot, a note of that because then next time you call them it doesn't harm just to ask how Johnny is you know, is everything okay are you free to talk for a couple of minutes um, because it just shows that personal touch that, that like, they kind of feel like you're making an effort to, to be aware of their situation and help them in their situation and also just keep track of when you contacted them um, when you're going to contact them next if you agree to speak to them in a couple of days or after the weekend so you have all of that information down somewhere either on a computer or in a notepad or on a card whatever you prefer you just need to kind of track it all okay um, another good thing to do and there's loads and loads of great examples of, of people that join clean easy after coming to one of our events so there's lots of different events that you can invite them to and most of them um, we welcome guests so there are local open evenings uh, or uh, uh, business opportunity meetings there are the the regional uh, millionaires colleges <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, excuse me there are company events that head office organize uh, you know, Birmingham and last year there was like Bolton and Cheltenham so all over the country there will be local meetings that you can invite somebody to and they might be happy just to sort of commit an hour or two of an evening or if they're really keen they'll come to one of the day long events and they will learn so much about it that will just help them decide if Clean Easy is right for them. So feel, feel free to in, invite them because I think that will show a great commitment from them 
and, and it just gives them an idea of, of what level of support they can expect if they join your team. And um, if you do invite a guest, just <coughs> excuse me, just warn them of the dress code. I mean, most opportunity meetings, it's kind of smart, casual, um, and for most people, they just you know come in whatever they're wearing. If there was you know a painter and decorator, and he came in in his overalls covered in paint, you might feel a little bit sort of um, out of of kind of the mix because everyone else looks a bit smarter than him but um, just kind of give them a quick heads up for that so they can change if they want to. Make sure you arrive early so that you you know they're not stood around waiting not knowing anybody so if you get there first you can look out for them and then once they're here make sure you introduce them to other people your other team members or your sponsor or other people at the meetings that you know. Just make sure that they make you make them feel welcome and you make them feel that they're going to be part of something exciting. So, once you've spoken to them and you've sent them some information, probably the most important step is following up. And it's so easy not to do this. You know, you send them the information and then you start to think, oh, well, if they're interested, they'll get in touch. And most people don't. Everyone's got busy lives. They, they, you know, it's not that they don't want to speak about it, but they, you know, they look at the information and think, oh, that looks interesting. They've got a couple of questions and they think, oh, I might give them a call tomorrow evening. And then tomorrow evening comes along and, and little Johnny's a bit ill, so they have to look after little Johnny. And then the next day, their mum says, oh, come and do some shopping with us. So they go off with their mum. Three or four or five days down the line, they've kind of forgotten. But if you ring them up, they'll say, oh, yeah, thanks very much for calling back. Yeah, no, I was really interested. I had a couple of questions. I wondered if it would be okay just to clarify these. So it's really, really important just to follow up a day or two after you've sent them the information call them back and just say, hi, I just wondered what you thought of that information I emailed to you. And then shut up. Just let them tell you what they thought. Let them talk. Quite often, they'll say, oh yeah, I was quite interested. I've got a couple of questions. <coughs> if they say, oh no, I don't think it's for me, then you may well find that it's a, a kind of a preconceived idea that it won't work for them for various reasons. So for example, a lot of people will say, oh yeah, no, I think we have a clean, easy distributor around here already. And, you know, I mean, I, I really love that one because Sue Marshall, who, who joined me, who, who signed me into the business, lives a couple of hundred yards away. When I joined, she'd been in the business nine years, and I just thought, oh, well, crikey, I'm going to have to drive five, ten miles away to the next town to get any customers. Because I didn't realize how the whole kind of blanketing and then building a customer base worked. So you can just sort of say, oh, yeah, no, I know how you feel. Actually, when I joined, I felt exactly the same. But what I found was, and then you can kind of just explain you know, how it works or how you experienced it. So that feel, felt, found is just a great way to you know, just, just kind of understand their situation, say that you agree with them, you understand what, that, what you found was, and you can kind of help them get over that initial worry. Um, but what's really important, though, is don't persuade them to join. If people sort of say things like, oh, well, the only thing is I'm not really sure that I'll get many customers around here, if you start saying to them, oh, yes, well, you will. Everybody gets lots of customers. You know, you'll make loads of money. Don't worry about it. You know, you only need you know, a couple of hours here and there. If you persuade them to join by promising them that it's all going to be perfect, then the first time they come across any kind of problem, they're going to blame you. So all you can do is, is make sure they've got the information, but make sure they make the decision for themselves. And then if they've decided they want to do it, then they will persevere they're much more likely to persevere over any initial problems instead of just saying, oh, well, you said it would be all hunky-dory and I've had, a, you know, I've had a bad day or whatever. So, so that's really important there. Don't persuade them to join. Just ensure they've got the information and they decide for themselves. Okay, once somebody's basically uh, decided they'd like to join, this is where it gets really exciting, um, the next step is to, to sponsor them into the business. And if you've never done this before, your upline can help you with this, but it's very simple these days, much, much simpler than it used to be six months ago. Um, always, always, always do it with them. Um, this was more important that six months ago than it is now. Um, either do it with them face-to-face -face or over the phone. It's very simple. Um, and these days, it's just I just say to them, yeah, it'll just take us ten minutes. I just need to get, take a few details from you. I'll then send you an email with uh, a link so you can check that we've got the details right and then we can just go through the next couple of steps and you'll be up and we'll be finished in 10 minutes. If you just leave them to get on with it and send them the link, 
then th there's likely to be something that doesn't quite work or they've got a question about and if you're not on the phone with them or you're not there they will often not call you they will just say oh I'm not sure about this and they'll start to have second thoughts so always always do it with them as I said or either face to face if they're local or on the phone so you just log into your cleaneasy.co.uk <coughs> and I'm not going to go through in detail how to do that um, as I say speak to your sponsor they'll show you how to do it but if you go to you can see the screen snapshots if you go to the DSA under operations and then manuals and guides there's a document called the online registration guide and it just gives you all the screenshots of, of what you go through so it's very very simple these days um, and that by, you know, by looking through the screenshots you can kind of anticipate any questions that they might have once you've done three, four, five sign-ups yourself, you kind of know the areas where people sometimes have questions. Um, and then just welcome them to your team. Um, and just normally at this point or in the, the next day, within a day or two of them signing up, you need to have a conversation with them just to understand what they want out of Clean EP. Because you know, if it's just an extra £50 a week and they're just looking to do some catalogues, you don't want to bombard them with loads of team building training. Um, but if they're looking for replacing a full-time income or some really serious money, then they might be interested in that sort of training straight away. So just make sure you understand what they want from, from the business at this point. Okay, so we're just about wrapped up now. Um, this was team building for beginners. Hopefully you should now know whether or not you have to build a team. Um, if you decide not to, why well, you should, in my opinion, try and build a team. <coughs> Excuse me. What tools you'll need. Um, a good way to get started, that was your warm list. Um, a variety of different rods that you can use in the, in the pond of life. Uh, what to do when you get a lead, what information to send them, and then how to do that follow-up. Hopefully that all makes sense. So, that was number four out of eight. Next week where the, 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 the follow-up from that is once you have some team members how do you support them so that's what we'll be covering next week number five how to support your new team members and I mentioned at the beginning that this is all being recorded you can see there they're all on YouTube so this one I'm just gonna turn off the recording now so bear with me a moment <coughs>